today we're talking about this bad boy. Ah, oh, that intro was so unnecessary. Let's go. All right, so today is going to be really simple. We're going to be talking about a lens that I got pretty much at the same time that I got the R6 and that lens is the 35mm RF 1.8. And let me tell you that this lens is pretty much amazing. And I'm going to try and tell you and show you why is it that I think that this lens is amazing and why I think that this lens is something that you should get. So yeah, today we're going to be taking a few pictures, we're going to take some video, we're going to see some friends, it's going to be awesome. So, let's go ahead and do just that, but for that we need to get changed, so looking good, looking fresh, and now we can go out and I'll be able to show you what exactly this beauty can do. Let's go! By the way, everything that you're going to see and pretty much this whole video is going to be recorded with the 35mm so pretty much we're going, we are seeing right now what this lens is capable of uh, when it comes to video so it looks amazing, the bokeh is fine but we're going to talk about that later in the video for now, let's just go outside and take the pictures, alright? Let's do this! Alright, so for an amazing surprise, the sun actually came out. There are no more clouds in the sky, so that's pretty good. And I'm going to explain to you what the plan is for today. Basically, the whole plan today is we're going to take some photos indoors uh, just to test how it performs in low light conditions. And then we're going to go outside and take some pictures in the open when it's the sunset and the golden hour and that pretty stuff because the sun just came out so that's the plan today and you'll be able to see how this lens well performs under different types of conditions so now I'm just waiting basically for my friend and after that we can get to business like my present now is my past so lost in a familiar So we are done, <laughs> what kind of position, I mean, we're done, pretty happy with the results, let's see, let's see what I can, what I'll show you, right? I pretty much I think that we got some pretty good results, Jesus Christ, mother of God, uh, we did everything, the photos look amazing, as you can see the light right now is just superb, when you get the light, when it's just pink enough and just after sunset you get an amazingly beautiful light it's been five hours since we started taking pictures and the pictures look great i'm gonna show you that in a moment and of course we're gonna talk about the whole lens and everything that i like about this lens because the pictures are just great everything that comes out of this lens is just amazing uh, so yeah let's head back because it's pretty windy and a little coffee won't hurt anybody oh, mother of god so yeah uh, I I'm gonna head back to the car and I'll be seeing you guys in a few. Finally get to talking about this lens and I can explain to you a lot of the things that I really enjoy about this lens. Now the first being that this is a 35mm and personally I think this is a, a 
perfect focal length for a lot of stuff. I mean, you can take portraits, you can take landscapes, you can take a lot of stuff. Uh, pretty much basically what you saw in the video is an example, a little preview if you want, of what this lens is capable of. So it's a really, really versatile lens that you can take a lot of stuff with. Now the second thing, of course, is that this lens is a 35 f 1.8 so that means it has a better depth of field and when I say that I mean that if I do something like this and I get closer to the camera you can see that in here pretty much in the background you get a better depth of field it's all pretty much blurred and my face is really really on focus and <laughs> pretty much the lens makes the subject stand from the background let's say for example if there were plenty of trees behind me or lights or stuff like that you would still have a perfect well focus on me and the rest would be blurred out next of course is this lens should be also better in lower light conditions because it has a bigger aperture so a lot more light can get into the lens and into the sensor which means that you're going to get a lot more light into your image so if you're in the dark or if you are if you have a lower uh, source of light you are going to still be able to manage with a lens like this because it has a bigger aperture now <laughs> all of those things are only the surface of this lens the next thing of course is the size of the lens now let me show you what I mean by size of the lens a normal lens let's say for example the 24 to 70 would look something like this now this lens is not small but it's not big either it's what you would call a normal sized lens now the only difference is that this lens is an EF lens which means that you need the adapter with it and that means that you are going to uh, get a bigger lens because well it adds in size so, so this would be pretty much a normal size lens now let me change the lenses so that you can see the difference in size all right so everything should be the same uh, the, I'm using right now the 24 to 70 and I change simply to show you what it would look like really small so this lens is really really portable if you want to put it on your bag or anywhere pretty much this lens is never going to take a lot of space it's also really light so it's really convenient <laughs> if you bring a lot of equipment with you maybe you have a uh, uh, your body you have three lenses you have a microphone you have a tripod you have a drone you have all of this equipment and you need to choose exactly what is it that you need so that you don't bring extra stuff and you get as, as much space as you can in your bag if you want something that it's light and compact this is something that you should look for now the next thing is something that you may have already realized because it's really something that it's important to me as I said before, right now I am using the 24 to 70 simply to show you the size of the lens. But there is a big difference, a big difference that maybe you heard when I changed both the lenses. And let me show you that. All right, so now let me change lenses. All right, so now that let's do the same test that we did with the 24 to 70. Now maybe, maybe you heard pretty much the background noises, my family talking in the background, but what I was trying to show you is the noise that this lens made when it came to focusing. Now I don't know if my lens is defective or it has a problem, I don't think it has, but this is a really expensive lens. This is a $2,000 lens and compared to that, this lens is cheaper and there's no noise whatsoever with it so when it comes to video if you're maybe trying to make videos and uh, record the nature or stuff that well in most cases a lot of people don't want the focusing noise to be in their videos and if you're using a microphone like I'm using on top of my camera right now you're going to hear the noise of the focusing of the lens if you're using a cheaper lens or in this case something like an expensive lens like the 24 to 70 EF so that would be another great thing about this lens now if we're talking about videos well you want to make the best types of videos right well this lens also has image stabilization and 
Now that I talked about all of the specs that this lens has, well, in your mind you may be thinking, well, this lens may be something around 2000. Well, this lens is only around 650 Canadian dollars. So it's really, really cheap compared to other lenses which are in the market and they're pretty much all around $2,000 to $3,000. So compared to all of those, this lens is really, really cheap and you get a lot from it. So if we want to do a little recap on what this lens offers, it's pretty much really small. It's also really silent. It's also really fast. As you saw, uh, there's no problem whatsoever with the focusing. It also has image stabilization and all of that for $650. And the last thing that this lens has macro capabilities. I didn't actually said that before because I don't think that 35 mil is something that it's really used for a lot of people when it comes to macro photography. But if you really want to get close to a subject, let me just give you an example, okay? I'm gonna put my face really, really close to the lens. All right, I really don't like putting my face so close to the lens, but as you can see, it can still focus on my face and I'm really, really close to the lens. So there shouldn't be any problems whatsoever if you want to take pictures of something really close or if you want to take a video of something really close. So all of that is why I think that this lens is just great. I did a whole photo shoot and I've done plenty of photo shoots only using this lens and I have never been disappointed. If you just bought a new R6, a new R5 and you just spend pretty much $4,000, well, maybe you are looking for something a little bit more cheap when it comes to glass and I think that this is a perfect lens that you should buy if you're getting into the mirrorless world and you want to start picking up your RF glass. That's everything that I had to say about this lens. I really, really enjoyed this lens. I think I've said it enough. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna go. I hope this video was useful for you guys. If you have anything else to say, please leave them in the comments down below and I'll be happy to answer to you. I hope you guys enjoy the last of, well, pretty much fall. And yeah, go outside, take some pictures, enjoy the weather, enjoy everything, subscribe if you want to and all of that fun stuff. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.